Hi class, so let's keep learning about these transformations and now I'm going to dig a little bit more into the view matrix. And I'll explain a camera model for doing that. Okay. So as a reminder, the view matrix um, is the one here where we want to go from world coordinates, our world coordinate system, into this coordinate system of this little square into the camera. So we take a point in world coordinates and we find out where is it in my camera space, okay? So that's what the view transformation uh, does. So one way to do this is we can simply use our existing transformations, no big deal. Okay, so you can rotate, you can scale, you can translate um, and apply that to this matrix and it'll move the world, it'll move the world around based on those things. Um, um, but some people find that a little hard to use. And I will highlight this point that I just said, that this does move the world. Points. Not the camera. And the reason for this is intuitively it's because we're not trying to put a camera in a world. We're trying to get points on the screen. So we go from the world, where is it in the camera coordinate system? So we bring everything, we line everything up to the camera, and then that gets projected onto the screen, and then that gets put into the raster. So everything collapses inward, okay? But that's intuitively, practically, this happens because of the matrix multiplication order. So if I go back up here, You'll see here, I have my point, I apply by the model matrix to, you know, put it in, um, put it into the world. And then once it's in world space, I apply by the view matrix to bring everything into this camera space. It's already in the world, we now bring it into camera space. Okay. There we go. So like I said, some people find this a little confusing, and it works just fine. But if you want to do things like moving a camera around, from that perspective, it can be tricky to be thinking about rotation translation. So people find it often more useful to create um, a camera model, where you model, instead of using these transforms, you model where the camera is and where it's looking yourself, and then in, in terms of world coordinates, and then it's a little more easy to think about. So the way that this works is we construct a basis. which moves points back and forth. A voice is to move points in and out of, um, am I zoomed out? Yeah, I'm zoomed out a little, that's good. Um, to move points in and out of camera space. Okay. So it kind of looks like this. I have a coordinate system here and I'm gonna draw um, let's make it a little tidier. And I'm going to draw a camera down here. Okay, and my camera is in the world right here, looking at the world at this rotation angle. That's fine. This is where the camera is looking. The first thing I want to highlight is we have a center point here, and we have a vector going straight up parallel to those lines here, the straight up vector. This is called, surprisingly, the up vector of the camera model. Okay, so this is the up vector and it determines which way the camera is rotated. It's also the y-axis of the screen coordinates, right? So that's, um, that's great. So we have the up vector, doesn't have to be axis aligned. Okay, and then we have another vector which is orthogonal to this, okay? because our, our basis needs orthogonal, um, uh, orthogonal vectors, right? We call this perp, or perpendicular. So we have perp. This is some perpendicular vector. Uh, perpendicular, whatever, um, vector. Cool. So just to make sure this is all clear, this green area here, this is my world coordinates. Okay, and then 
this blue area, this is my camera coordinates. So you can imagine some point P. In my camera coordinate, it's minus this many. Oops, that's an eraser. Uh, in my camera coordinates, is minus this many, and down this many has, a, has an, a, a position. In world coordinates, it has these position here. So we want to go back and forth between those two. Based on how we've set up our world, we know where things are in the world. We know where P is in the green space. We're going to want to end up finding out where it is in the blue space. However, before we do that, we're actually going to work in the opposite direction first. We're going to take the point from camera space and bring it into the world space. That's the easiest way to do it, and then I'll show you how to fix it the other way. So the first thing is we need to create this basis I've talked about, and we've talked about this before. Now, up, I'm going to annotate this. This is my y vector, right? It's straight up and down, and the perpendicular can be my x. So if I look at my basis function, it's going to look um, like this. So my perpendicular x, my perpendicular y, this is my x in my basis, or my u, I guess we should call it. doesn't really matter. Um, and then the other vector is going to be the up of the x and the up of the y. And this is my v coordinate. And this, this, this basis now determines those vectors in camera space. So this is what it looks like. Now the next question you might be having is, okay, up I can come up with. You can make up up, you can create it yourself. But then once I have up, how do I get the perpendicular vector? Luckily, there's a shortcut. And you can think about this in your own time and figure out why it works. But, but here's the shortcut. If I have my up vector, my perpendicular vector is simply going to be u of y as my x coordinate, okay, and then minus u of x as my y coordinate. And again, I'm going to annotate these. This is my x, comma y. If I use that as my as my perpendicular vector, it's guaranteed to be perpendicular to the up in the way that I've drawn it here. So that's really nice. So now I can substitute that in when I have my basis. Well, let's start looking at how this might affect a point, okay? So I'm going to draw out, I have this point, and like I said, I'm starting in camera space. So I have a point in camera space x, point in camera space y, and let's make them homogeneous coordinates. So I have this point in camera space, and I want to do some transformations to it to bring it out to be just a point x and a point y. Okay, This is camera space. This is world space. Now, I need to apply some transformations to P to get that to work. Well, the first one I'm going to do is my basis. So this is just my basis function, which we have up here. Now, we just said that PX is UY, so I can start substituting that in. And PY is minus UX, just like that. And then UX. And this is also UY. Yep. And then being homogeneous, we fill that in. Cool. So if, and this is my basis. Cool. If I multiply that camera space point by our basis, we'll now find out um, axis aligned world coordinates for that. It'll tell us, okay, P was this many along perpendicular and that many along up. So I follow those vectors, and now it'll tell me how, where it is in the real world um, in relation to this origin here. The problem is now we haven't took taken into account this point. Was that green? We haven't taken into account the center of my camera space. So I'm going to introduce a new point here. And this is going to be CX, CY, just the center of the camera. So in addition to transforming from these vectors to those vectors, I'm going to want to translate my point offset here um, from the origin. Okay. So I want to translate my point offset by CX, CY to bring it over here. The basis, the basis conversion. So the basis multiplication, it converts from, from these coordinates into these, and then we offset it to bring us to the camera center. So then we just do a translation. And our translation should look familiar. 1, 0, camera x. One, uh, 0, 1, camera y. 0, 0, 1. Cool. Now some of you might be thinking, but you can combine them. You've showed this. OK, yes, yeah, you, you can combine them. But I'm keeping them separate here to keep it simple. And it'll help us out in a minute. Okay, so this is my move to camera center. So if I have a world space coordinate, px, py, 
oh, sorry, a camera space coordinate, PC, X, PC, Y. I multiply it by the basis. It converts it to my X and Y vectors in a world space. I translate it to the center of the camera. And now I'm going to find out those green lines right there. I'm going to find out where P is in world coordinate space. Great. So I can now go from camera space to world space. I multiply by the basis, so I, you know, off those vectors, I translate it. Now, that's the wrong way, right? I want to go, I don't want to go from camera to world space. I want to go to from world to camera space. So we need to invert this function. But I did it this way because it's a lot easier to understand what we're doing. So we want to go from world coordinates, excuse me, to camera, to camera coordinates. So to do this, we need the inverse, right? So I have a world space coordinate, I give the inverse, I get my camera space. Now let's work through this. Now remember, um, always apply the matrices in reverse order. Okay, so let's work this out. So let's draw this out. I have my point here. Now instead of starting with a point in camera space, I'm going to start with a point in world space. And I'm going to apply some transformations and I'm going to find out where it is in camera space. That way I can now, if I'm in camera space, I can start collapsing it and drawing it on my raster. But I need some transforms. So first, last time we took a camera space coordinate, we applied the basis, then we translated it. We have to do things in reverse order. So first we have to untranslate it. Now remember, the inverse of the transformation matrix is just, if I want CX, CY translation, you just translate um, in the opposite direction. So I can just do this, 1, 0, minus CX, 0, 1, minus CY, 0, 0, 1. Bam. Cool. So I, that's my inverse. And then I'll do my inverse of my basis. So this one's a little more tricky. How on earth do we invert this basis function? Well. You could just use the invert command, um, but there's a there's a nice trick here. If the up vector and the perpendicular vector are length one, okay, so length one, then we have an orthogonal uh, orthonormal basis. We have two orthogonal vectors of length one. This is a special case. The inverse of that matrix is just the transpose, okay? But only in those conditions, only if they're length one. If they're not length one, when you go in one direction, it'll add a scale. When you go in the other direction, it won't undo the scale, so it won't work anymore. So, um, yeah, if they're length one, we can just use the transpose. Otherwise, you have to invert differently, okay? Maybe manually using the math I showed last class or something like that. So then in that case, if, if we guarantee, if we know that these are, I'm going to make a note here, um, length one, if we know that, then we just put the transpose in here. So uy minus ux, ux, uy. There we go. That's my transpose. Great. In that case, this is my inverted um, inverted <laughs> basis matrix and end transformation. So this is really neat. Um, you can take this and you can pre-compute it, right? You can symbolically pre-compute this. And what I mean by that is you can go, okay, well, it's actually up x times this and you start having like if I multiply the CX in there, you can actually come up with a template. And just fill it in with your up, your perpendicular, or just your up vector and your CX. You can just fill it in. If you look online, sometimes you'll find those templates. 
I don't like that way because it's error prone. It's confusing. Okay, so this method, I think, is more intuitive. So what I would do in code is I'd, I'd have the transformate the translation matrix, I'd have the base because I transpose them, I'd multiply them together. It's a lot of extra steps, but you're only doing it not very often. And then you can streamline or optimize later. If you want to debug, this is a lot more intuitive. So I, I recommend just taking this. And we're going to learn one more matrix in here. Again, you can build up a template, but you know, let's just leave it and you do it manually um, and multiply them out. And I think you'll find it's less error prone. So the last thing I want to mention, I guess I should cap, recap here. This will take a point in world space. So let's say I have a point here, P2, and transform it to camera space. You see here, it'll be outside of the bounds of my camera, which we haven't really talked about, um, but it'll, it'll be outside of that, assuming the scale stays the same. A point here will be here in camera space, and we'll learn, all right, this is this many to the right and this many up, okay? So you can take this, any point in the world now, transform it into camera space, and find out um, how to plot it. Good. There's one thing I want to add, is how do we zoom in and out? Okay, how do we zoom in and out? We do this by adding scale. Okay, so what you do is if you add a scale transform in here, you're going to scale the vectors. Scale the camera vectors. So we draw what that looks like. So if I have my coordinate system here, then you can imagine I have a camera. This is up and this is perpendicular. Cool. If I scale those up and perpendicular vectors, your camera covers a bigger area. Okay? And a bigger area, people think bigger means zoomed in. It's the opposite. It's zoomed out. Okay? And you're zoomed out because you're covering a bigger area. Anything in there now looks smaller. So it's really not hard to do. Let's look at what we've done already. We have a point in camera space, and we still apply our basis to it first. We transform it first in its basis. And then once it's done, then we scale it. So then we grow it or shrink it. And then we offset um, by translating it to the camera center. Perfect. And then to invert, um, sorry, yeah. And then to invert, we use B minus one, scale minus one, and then translate minus one um, for the world coordinate space. And it'll give us a point in camera coordinates. And to, as a, just to quickly recall, to invert the scale, we can use one over S, right? Instead of multiplying by S, you divide by S. No big deal. So that's it. This is a camera model. If you implement this and you build these matrices and you apply it to all of your points, you can move a camera to a different location. You can rotate it. You can zoom it in. You can zoom it out, all without playing with any of your model ver ver uh, matrices or where things are placed in the world. You place them in the world, you're done, and then you place your camera. All right. Thanks.